Hey guys, Alex here doing my Money in the Bank 2012 pay-per-view review. Pay-per-view just got off here. I'm going to try to make this quick because I already had to do this review once and then my capture sucked. So we'll just make it kind of quick. Um, show started out with the World Heavyweight title Money in the Bank match between Damian Sandow, Tyson Kidd, Christian, Santino Morella, Tensai, Cody Rose, and Dolph, Dolph Ziggler and Ken Cara. Pretty good match, actually. Good way to open the show. A lot of fun spots here. Actually, didn't I actually like Tensai a lot in here because he was that big, strong guy. Um, he had some of the cooler, like, big muscle spots. Uh, a few botches in here that kind of hurt the match a little bit, but I never, like, were so god-awful that just, like, you know, ruined it completely. Um, you know, they had they did a nice job of, like, teasing people winning. Uh, I thought at one point Cody Rhodes could win or Christian or, ten, you know, even... Uh, Tyson Kidd at a moment and Damian Sandow so really you know they did a nice job of teasing the tension um, probably my favorite spot was uh, Tensai doing the powerbomb to Sin Cara on the ladder and then just chucking Dolph Ziggler over the announce table just crashing and that was pretty cool um, Ziggler ended up going over here which I'm very happy about because I think this is the guy who deserves a, money to, or a world title run a real one this time not some 20 minute segment on Smackdown so hopefully that happens and um I guess a good way to start the show, and I like that they actually used a lot of young talent here, which is what the Money in the Bank should be about. Um, I'll give it three and three fourths. You know, good way to start the show, I think. Then we had Alberto Del Rio versus Sheamus for the world title. This was... I would describe it as almost as like a TV match. It felt like a TV match. It just didn't have that that drama and that uh, that that um, hype and that, you know, built up that... You, they should have had for this match, especially if it's like a world title match. It just didn't work for me, and uh, it was nothing wrong with the match. It was just kind of like sitting there, like okay, okay, okay. Oh, that was nice, you know. Just never really got me hooked in. The go home segment was pretty good though. Like they had a nice little back and forth near the end, um, but like I said, just never really got in this match a whole lot. And it, it's just clear that Alberto Rio just isn't working as a main eventer. I don't know what they're going to do with the guy. But really, just doesn't have doesn't have what it takes. I don't think, and uh, nothing against the guy. Just I don't really care for him in the main event. Um, I'll give it three stars though. It was still entertaining and watchable, but just never really got me hooked in it. And uh, after this, they had Alberto beat up Sheamus, and Ziggler came out trying to cash it in, um, chased off Del Rio when Joe was trying to stop him, and then Sheamus broke kicked him, and like match never started. So Ziggler saw the briefcase. Thank God they didn't do a screw job of Ziggler, but. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't mind it because, you know, like, it doesn't make him look horrible because Ziggler just got done with the ladder match. So you could argue that, oh, Ziggler was still beat up. But I don't know. Just, it was just there. I don't know why. Um, they could have they done without it. They could have done it on a roll or something. But whatever. Uh, then we had uh, Primo Nepco versus the Primetime Players. I'm actually really enjoying the Primetime Players because I think they're a team that WWE's actually getting behind and they're building up very credibly and making them look good and, uh, you know, I think that when they become tag team champions, it might it'd probably be pretty cool. So, um, this match was just all right. Nothing really special here. It was basically here for filler, really, but it was pretty good filler. So, um, Epic Primo especially looked really good in this match. Um, you know, did some nice spots back and forth. Um, I like the uh, springboard crossbody he did it right into Dan or Darren Young's knees for the you know double he got busted. That was cool. Um, didn't really like Primo and Epico going over here just because they're building up primetime players as their next, as their number one contenders, and they might be the next champions. So, but maybe they'll do a uh, three-man or three-team tag team match at SummerSlam for the title. So, I wouldn't mind that. Uh, two and a half. And then we had the notice qualification match with special guest referee AJ between CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. This was another good match between the two. Between the two, which you know just proves that WWE cannot. It's much like. Um, AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels in TNA. The storyline sucks, but the matches deliver, so I can't complain too much. Um, once again, though, AJ, you know, involvement in the match was very minimal because he got taken out like right in the very beginning almost, and then didn't show up for, like until like last like five minutes I'd say. And um, once again, just you know, nothing really happened with AJ. She didn't have any direct involvement with the finish. She didn't play favorites. Um, you know, she helped out both guys at one point during the match, and that was it. So once again, like this whole AJ storyline just leading to nowhere, really, and just, you know, when are they going to actually make it mean something? But as for the match, you know, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan were great as always. They really used the new disqualification match to make this this match unique. Um, I liked them brawling on the outside. The kendo stick shots were great. 
Uh, the table spot finish was cool, and I think it fit well because they've been wrestling for like half an hour, and like they were so exhausted that that table was just like the the, the final nail in the coffin. Just couldn't get up after that, so I liked it a little. Liked it, you know, and then didn't have, need to be a finisher to end the match, which you know something you don't see very often. Um, and just you know, really, these two guys work so well together, and just you know, just goes to prove that you don't need these guys to have a gimmick. You just need to give them a match, and they'll do the rest. But really great match, four stars. Then we had Ryback versus Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins. Um, nothing really special here. Uh, Ryback just fighting more competitive guys for once. Um, I don't like the idea of him facing these guys and actually getting getting beat up during the match and then coming back because like you're just showing that this that Ryback can't wrestle real wrestlers and can only take on jobbers. But I don't know, maybe they'll actually give him a real feud for sometime soon before he becomes um, just boring and bland and people get tired of him because the crowd is actually pretty well behind him right now so I think the time is right to give him a real feud before they turn on him so hopefully they did that I'll give it a star though it was entertaining uh, then we had Layla, Catherine, Tamina versus Beth Phoenix, Natalia, and Eve Torres mm, Divas match I'll, I didn't really even pay attention to it most of the time I'll give it a uh, three-fourths of a star then we had the WWE title Money in the Bank match between John Cena, Chris Jericho, Big Show, Kane, and The Miz, who was added onto the show later when he made his return, which I was actually kind of cool with, because that added a little something. This match was just average. You know, it was a, probably the worst Money in the Bank match. Uh, I'm not sure if that's exactly. I need to rewatch some of the old Money in the Banks, but just nothing really special happened in this match. Big Show did this whole monster thing, and they got taken out. Although I did like the way they got taken out, I liked the buried in ladders like he was in 2010. I think it was in 2010. I don't know if it was him or Kane. I think it was him. But I like that. Just yeah, I think that's I think that's a funny spot, you know. And um, but you know nothing really big happened this match. There were no big memorable spots. Um, the Chris Jericho almost you know being taken off the ladder was cool, but it just didn't happen. You know, and the, just no real big spots. This match, but I expected, but like you kind of you kind of expect. Money in the Bank to have a few spots. It just felt like an average ladder match or something. But they broke out the giant ladder again for Big Show, which I like. I think that's a cool thing. I wish they'd use that ladder more because it's just so fucking big and it just, you know, you would love to see them do more spots off that, but whatever. Um, finish was really weird though because, like, Big Show climbed the ladder, took out Jericho and Miz from the ladder with the punches, tries to do the same with John Cena. Cena blocks it with the briefcase, just beating Big Show with a briefcase, and then accidentally yanks it off the chain and he won and it's just kind of like kind of just goofy and whatever but his facial expressions made it funny so I guess it's alright I don't know but I think I expected John Cena to win so I'm not mad about that I don't care I just wish it wasn't the main event because Cena, Daniel, Cena Punk and Daniel Bryan should have been the main event because it's the fucking WWE title and they could have done the whole thing where Cena came out and teased cashing it in but then said no I'll wait till SummerSlam or something you know if they're going to do CM Punk versus Cena at SummerSlam, which I'm then they're going to, but uh, I'll give the match three stars. It was good, it was entertaining, and I was, you know, pretty all right with the match throughout it, but, and I didn't mind Cena winning. Um, so, all in all, I'll give the ma uh, pay-per-view seven out of ten. It was watchable, it was entertaining at times, um, but, you know, kind of sad that this pay-per-view last year was like the most must-see show in WWE history in years. And now it's just an average show, you know, just WWE just kind of showing that they're lagging a lot, a lot in their product, so hopefully they'll pick it up soon. All right, that's it for now, guys. Take care. Bye.